Hello and welcome to another lesson on business continuity and disaster recovery. The acronyms BCDR. BCDR is going to be an important acronym to also help you remember and memorize the order in which these activities are done. So when we're, t when we're talking about business continuity and disaster recovery, we're talking about continuation of the business versus recovery of the business. So let's get into it. Business continuity is when you're talking about, again, keeping the business going. You're talking about these other terms such as critical path or critical operations. That term critical becomes important when you're talking about business continuity because those things are talking about keeping the business going. So mission critical functions is another term that you can run into and that's talking about the specific tasks that you have to do to keep the business going. And those are things such as keeping the web servers up and running, keeping the firewalls up and running, and keeping the sales mechanisms functioning within your web application or whatever. And also having the personnel who are responsible for those particular tasks also being available and running to keep the business going, basically keeping the, the staff um, on site and working. So when a disaster happens, you basically have a failure of, of the <clears throat> of the continuity and then what happens is you're going to enact or um, initiate the contingency so again the continuity is keeping the business going and then the contingency is when you're going to recover the critical stuff first so critical stuff being what we just talked about the sales the firewalls the web applications the staff needed to support all of those functions and those tasks to keep the business going or to resume the business. So then after the contingency efforts, once we have the critical stuff up and running, what's going to happen is you're going to transition into a recovery phase. And the recovery phase is when you're going to transition back to a state of normalcy, when you're going to bring your normal operations back online. So for example, if your contingency was a portable office or a portable trailer of some kind, your recovery efforts would focus on getting you back into the building, your regular building, whether it's restoring the regular building or whether it's building a new building where the site was or buying an entirely new building, basically getting all the staff back, getting your normal operations up and running again. So remember we talked about the the acronym BCDR, well that's going to help you to memorize the order in which you do these things. So just think of the acronym BCDR, which stands for of course Business Continuity Disaster Recovery, but just think of the acronym BCDR and you're going to go, okay, the first thing that you do is you have business continuity. What's business continuity? That's keeping the business going. BC, C is contingency operations. I mean, it's not, but it's just bear with me here for a second. This is for memorization purposes. This is only for the order. Okay, so you have the contingency operations. That's going to happen after the business continuity. So you get business continuity, and then you're going to have the contingency operations, which is bringing the critical stuff back up after a disaster. And then you have, after the critical stuff is back up and running, you have the disaster recovery, which is when you're going to bring your regular operations back online. So it's just a, a little trick to memorize it here. You have B, C, and D, R. The real acronym stands for Business Continuity and Disaster Recovery, but you can also use that to remember the order, which is Business Continuity, Contingency, and then Disaster Recovery. So, a little trick there. Hopefully it's helpful. So, a uh, quick side note here. Um, be sure to know the difference between contingency and continuity. I could see that being a, an exam question or possibly a practice exam question. Um, I might put one on our site. So contingency again, what is contingency? Contingency is keeping the business going. Sorry, it's the reverse. Continuity is keeping the business going and contingency is bringing the critical stuff back up. So let's talk quickly about recovery objectives and then we'll hit one more topic and we'll be done with this video. Maximum allowable downtime is the maximum amount of time that your business can be down before you have to fold, before your business is no more, before your business can no longer function. This used to be called MTD, maximum tolerable downtime, but they changed it to maximum allowable downtime to make it more fun of an acronym, MAD. 
So then you have the RPO, which is Recovery Point Objective, and that's usually measured in time, but it refers to data. It's kind of a weird acronym. So how much data can you lose before your business becomes inoperable or defunct, basically? And then you have this thing called the RTO, Recovery Time Objective, and that, that is how much time do you prefer to take before you uh, recover. So the, the, key, the key term with this one, or the key word, I would say, is the word goal. So number three here is a goal. The other two are, they're relying on, uh, you know, the business has to keep, the business has to recover within that time or within that amount of data in order to be still viable. And the, the last one is a goal. So last concept here is the BIA, the business impact analysis. And that is where you take, that's where you're considering how to determine what the critical path is. So if you remember the beginning of this video, we talked about critical path. Critical path is all the tasks and the staff needed to, to keep the business going, basically. So the business impact analysis helps you to determine what that critical path is. And there are three ways to do that. Well, let me back up one second here. The, the BIA, what is it? It's, it's, a, it's a tool a template or a tool it's a it's a document of some kind that shows the asset values and the impact to those assets if there were to be any kind of outage or if there were to be any kind of disruption or loss to those assets so there are three ways to get the BIA done and that's uh, number one you would do an internal survey with your staff and your management and basically everybody that you can that, that would be reasonable to determine um, asset values and, and potential impact if things are lost. And so the, one of the issues with that is that you, you might have some biases in there with people that work for the company. Another way to do it is to do an uh, internal financial audit. And audits are beneficial because they give you some pretty good values in terms of what, in terms of what things are worth. But uh, again, they're not perfect because asset values, asset values tend to change. And then you have the uh, customer surveys here, which is another way to do it. Customer surveys would also tend to be a little bit biased depending on what the customers are thinking. But again, customers drive your business. So uh, it just depends. Anyway, a holistic approach would be to do all three or some kind of version of all three. That's our last concept. So uh, thanks for watching. And if you want to get some practice questions under your belt, head on over to cissprep.net and sign up. It's $14 for six months of access. Currently we have 1,000 questions, and our goal is to have another 1,000 on top of that, and eventually 2,000, uh, hopefully by uh, early 2020. So look forward to that. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day.